Machine shop. Yeah, boy. What's going on, guys? Welcome to yet another Outward Top 5. Today, we're taking a look at the five best daggers. This is an offhand weapon type that focuses on really quick attacks. Daggers are extremely powerful because their skill Opportunist Stab can deal six times more damage if the enemy is afflicted with pain and confusion. This allows any dagger, even the lowly Shiv, to take on tough opponents, which makes deciding on the best daggers pretty challenging. All of these I have chosen are really close in terms of power and usability. The only bad thing I've found with daggers is that they have some really spotty range. I think it has to do with certain enemies having more challenging hitboxes, so the dagger looks like it should hit, but simply doesn't. So if you notice you miss against a particular enemy, maybe back out and rethink your strategy, because it's likely to happen again during that fight. But with that out of the way, let's check out the 5 best daggers in Outward Definitive Edition. At number 5, we have the Vampiric Dagger. Vampiric weapons can be challenging to get, yes that's true, but the dagger might be the easiest. You can increase its physical damage much higher than you can with other weapon types, making the massive amounts of damage you need to absorb go by much more quickly. On top of this, the Vampiric Dagger leeches health, and in fact the amount of health you leech is determined by how much damage you do. This does not include imbues, so your best bet is to wear armor that maxes out your physical damage, and you'll gain much more health back in one single hit. According to the Outward Wiki, all vampiric weapons heal 10% of damage dealt to health, and 5% damage dealt to burnt health. So, this means you can easily get rid of that dark red bar that keeps you from being fully healed. The vampiric dagger is simply great. One of the most effective ways to heal while in combat as they deal high impact to give you more openings to drain your opponent's life and replace yours. The only issue with a weapon like this is that it deals physical damage. Often elemental damage is much better as enemies are weak to it and die more quickly, but with something like the Zagus armor or Master Kazite armor, you'll get this monster to blast through enemy health. I do think there are some better options, which is why the Vampiric Dagger is only number 5 on this list. It doesn't do much else other than heal you, but sometimes that's all you need. At number 4 we have the Manticore Dagger. I originally had this guy at number 1, but with some more testing it doesn't really hold up. In the early game it's the best dagger, very clearly. Inflicting extreme poison at such a fast rate is very useful, and the decay damage one-shots human enemies if you get a backstab. It's honestly pretty nice of Caldera as well since there are several enemies weak to decay damage. Plus, the green mist emanating from the red needle is cool, I have to admit. But come across anything not weak to decay and you run into a bit of trouble. Yes, it deals enough physical damage to make it work, but definitely not the powerhouse I had hyped it up to be. Luckily, you can carry multiple daggers. Just keep this one in your pocket for human enemies and you'll have no issues with them whatsoever. The poison will do all the work, and honestly this is good for longer battles as well. If you wanted to switch daggers once or twice, just inflict extreme poison with this guy and then switch to, I don't know, maybe the vampiric dagger. You'll still get the advantage from using it. In the end, I have nothing against the Manticore Dagger. It's a nice reward for defeating a Manticore and slapping its tail onto some Amolite and Palladium. Then you can actually increase its decay damage even further with a new Sirocco enchant. I will say this thing is S tier against Caligrays. Those meddlesome lion apes can be impossible to take on with certain damage types. But the Manticore Dagger cuts through them like butter. I highly recommend you at least bring this one with you for any dagger build you try out. It's extremely valuable. At number 3 we have the Zorn's Glowstone Dagger. This one might surprise some of you as it doesn't seem all that good initially. However, there is a unique new Sirocco enchant called Tunnel's End. It requires the expanded library at the enchanting building as well as Voltaic Vines. This enchant decreases the weapon's lightning damage by 9%, while adding a lightning blast, which deals 60% of the dagger's base damage. Which is insane. Now, I think there's two ways to go about making this really strong. Number one would be to increase your lightning damage to a very high amount. 
This is extremely easy to do as the lightning element has great armor that boosts it and you can use Cabal Hermit or Hex Mage to tip the scales even further. Option number two would be to simply increase your physical damage. This says it deals 60% of the dagger's base damage. Zorn's Glowstone Dagger deals around 20 physical, meaning you could still focus on physical damage and get this dagger's power much higher. I think I'd actually prefer to go for physical damage since daggers are really easy to swap around and you could then make use of this one and Vampiric if you wanted to. But this enchant really makes Zorn's Dagger effective. I was killing enemies very quickly and I didn't even have any armor that granted me the good buffs. I think this is a super cool enchant and since elemental damage is very useful it completely destroys enemies weak to lightning. It's not even really a fight if you get it going. The only reason this isn't higher on the list is that it is a new Sirocco enchant making it much harder to get and it doesn't feel quite as solid all the time. Anything resistant to lightning will be awful for you to fight against. Excellent option for a dagger build though. At number 2 we have the Gilded Shiver of Tremontaine. This is a unique weapon found in Caldera. You'll need to release the Scarred Dagger from its icy prison in the Grotto of Chalcedony and combine it with Diamond Dust and Flash Moss. This grants you an icy dagger from the north. How it got here is unknown and it's likely that it's simply a shard of ice with a handle on it. It deals pure ice damage and no physical whatsoever. This makes it extremely easy to buff with a varnish and the plain old cool boon. It will make you weaker to fire damage by 15% which honestly doesn't make much sense. Wouldn't carrying something cold make you more resistant to fire? But I chalk it up to some magical curse on the weapon. On top of this the Gilded Shiver inflicts slowdown, crippled, and hampered. All three of these decrease your enemy's movement speed in some way. If you're looking to gain the edge on an opponent, this is one of the best weapons for it. Your enemy moves 25% slower after 2 hits, 50% slower after 3 hits, and can't move at all after 3 or 4. Unfortunately, I do have to mention that Hampered, while sounding really cool, is borderline trash. It reduces enemy movement speed to 0%. They literally cannot move, but that's not really how it works. Your enemies won't be able to move horizontally. In other words, they can't move from one spot on the ground, but they can still turn in a full 360 and attack you. This only lasts for about 6 seconds as well, which makes it nearly impossible to tell when you've applied it. So in theory, you'd be able to back up and take a potion real quick. But since enemies can still attack, it feels very difficult to tell when this is happening. I personally think it's a bad status that just didn't turn out the way it was intended. But, regardless, this weapon is still amazing. It slows your enemy by massive amounts and the high frost damage is awesome. You won't want to fight a Wendigo, that's for sure, but most other enemies will be a lot easier to kill with this icy beast. And fire enemies will seem like they're taking 10 times more damage. The raw ice output is very impressive. At number 1, we have the Rondel Dagger. I know, I'm just as surprised as you are. This measly iron dagger that can be found very early in the game is probably your best dagger. Its damage is not all that fantastic at first, but once enchanted with unsuspected strength, it will gain 150% more physical damage. Which brings it up to about 55 in a single hit if my math is correct. This doesn't even include armor buffs, discipline buff, and inflicting pain on your enemy. With the basic Rondel Dagger, you can reach such a massive amount of physical damage that nothing else is needed. It's not a particularly flashy weapon, more like an assassin hiding in plain sight, but it works. And that's really all I can say about it, it just works. You would think that something like the Vampiric Dagger would be better with all the work you need to get it, but no, the Rondel hits much harder. You might think the decay damage on the Manticore seems more useful. Not really, when a backstab still kills instantly with the Rondel. The Gilded Shiver does contest this a bit, but when you look at the negative resistance to fire and the pretty bothersome hampered status, the Rondel is more reliable. Enchant it one time and you have nothing else to worry about. It'll never break durability and can still be buffed with a varnish to take on those enemies, giving you more trouble. I was blown away by this weapon. 
but I guess sometimes the simple option can also be the best. Seriously, enchant a rondel dagger with unsuspected strength. Not only is it great in battle, but it feels much more reliable than other daggers. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the top five daggers in Outward Definitive Edition. Some of you might like one of these more than the other, but again, it's really hard to decide between them. Each is very powerful in its own way. Zorn's hunting dagger in particular can be quite surprising with the right build. But in the end, I had to go with the good old Rondel. Hopefully you got something out of this video and maybe learned a bit more about daggers. They're very overpowered due to opportunist stab, but also very tricky because they have the worst range in the game. After a bit of time using them, however, you will start to understand the quirky hitboxes and high damage will become the norm for you. Offhand weapons are really hard not to use in Outward just because they grant you so many options. Thanks for watching, and I wish you good luck with all your dagger-related endeavors. Catch you next time.